Hello and welcome to this video from Blender HD. My name is Jonathan Lampel, and in this quick video we're going to be going over rope or noodle physics inside of Blender. So any sort of string or what have you. So I looked around online and it seemed like there was some confusion going on about how to do this and there were a few different ways. One of them worked pretty well that involves parenting individual vertices to empty objects and it takes a really long time and it was pretty complicated. But I decided to do a different approach that I didn't see anywhere and so I'd like to share it with you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a curve. So our strand is going to be a curve so I'll just add a path and I want it to collide with this uh, little bar here and also the ground. So I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees on the z-axis just so it'll fall down straight. And all we need to do now is make that a soft body, make this object a collision object, and this object a collision object as well. So now, if you play this back, you can see nothing actually happens, but that's because it's supposed to be heading towards a goal. And normally this happens with vertex groups, but since uh, curves don't support vertex groups, it's interpreting the entire object as a goal. So we need to turn that off. And we can see now it falls, but it's acting kind of weird and it's not really working too well. And that's because there's just not enough information in this curve. So let's go into edit mode. Take everything W subdivided a few times. All right, so now we have a pretty thick strand of vertices. And we can play that back. We see we now have a noodle that's working pretty well. So this is really great. Uh, but what if we want to add any sort of shape to it, like a, like a rope, for instance? So really quick, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump onto another layer and I'm going to make a circle. Then in edit mode I'm going to scale it down and I'm going to position this around its origin point. So we have four circles around the origin and now in our curve here we can select it and in our curve options we can scroll down to, uh, let's see here, geometry, and choose bevel object, Bezier circle 001, I think that's the right one, yeah. Okay, so we have that, and if we go back to layer two, we can see that our scale influences the scale there. So we can scale it down to the size we want. So that's looking pretty good. And now we can take this, go into edit mode again, and then we wanna twist this around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this last vertice here, or vertex, and choose Enabled for our proportional editing. So when we move one, it'll sort of proportionally move the rest. And then I'm going to press Control t and that stands for Twist. So it's going to twist the rope. So we're just going to twist a bunch, just like you would in pretty much real life. And then for this end part here, I'm going to press Control t again, but then scroll down on my mouse wheel so it doesn't influence so much of an area. Now back in object mode we have our rope and if we play it back we can see that it does work but it's still a little funny. Uh, first let's move this over to the side so we can see the animation how it interacts a little better. Okay so we see the, the floor even though it... oh did I forget to add the collision object? That is my bad. Okay there we go. Now it's working pretty well, but you might say for a noodle or a rope, we don't want it to collide with itself, and second of all, it kind of clumps up way too tight. We want it to be a little more stiff. And the thing with curves when you're using them for soft bodies is that these settings right here uh, in the soft body goal, soft body edges, they don't do a whole lot. I mean, if you turn it off, you're going to get some pretty funny results, but adjusting the settings don't work the same as they do with geometry. And so what we need to focus on is the self-collision. So I'm going to check that on, and now you can see that it's not intersecting with itself anymore, which is great. But it still has those really tight bunches, and to get rid of that, we need to turn up the ball size, and that's just the way of saying that each vertice has sort of a an imaginary ball around it, and how large that ball size is determines how far away it will interact with the other vertices. So we're going to turn this up to 1. And we can see that it is now much more stiff. And the higher you turn this, the more stiff it will become. 
you can see if you turn it up too high, it'll start interacting like that. So two might be a little too high, so let's turn this back down to 1.5 and see how that goes. And you see we still have that sort of bounce in the middle, so let's just go with one. And that seems to do pretty well. And now we can also have these dampening and stiffness options. So this is how much pressure there is between the points. So if we turn that up really high, you can now see at the uh, tight curves here that they sort of expand at a, at a different rate. So maybe you can see this more clearly if I turn this up again. And you can see that there's a lot of pressure. However, if we turn this down to say 0.1, we won't have as much of that stretchy pressure and we won't have as much of that pressure in between. So it's just sort of a balancing act of deciding which settings are best for you. And lastly, we have this dampening option, which is fairly self-explanatory. It just dampens the, the self-collision with these imaginary uh, spheres And so very quickly we have our rope animation and something that was before very difficult and now it is pretty easy and very simple. So thanks for watching this quick little video. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time.